Welcome to part two of a series related to insecticide mode of action. This is Matt Montgomery, sales agronomist with Burris. Part two will review organophosphate and carbamate mode of action. If you tuned into session one, you know that we covered the basics of how insecticides work. There was quite a bit of background information in that session, and we're going to provide a very brief review of what we covered in session one. But if you've not tuned into that session, I would encourage you to stop, watch session one, and then review session two. This can be pretty heady stuff, and I want to make sure you're pretty familiar with the background material before we begin. Now, if you watch session one, you know that we described how the nervous system works. We presented a diagram very similar, but not exactly identical to this. We just want to remind you that the insect's brain sends instructions down the nerve, that the nerve is made up of little pieces called neurons, there are gaps between those neurons, and that the signal eventually makes it to organs, tissues that allow the insect to breathe, move, etc. When we decide to use an insecticide against an insect, we're disrupting that system. The application of an insecticide basically kills the transfer of information from one nerve to another. While the neurons remain intact, the fact that you disrupt the flow of information between those neurons almost acts as if you cut off the nerve following that disruption. We're trying to depict that in this slide by changing the color of the rest of the nerve yellow. I suppose I'm trying to convey the idea of a sickly nerve. It's great to have information about what needs to happen inside the body, but if you can't get that information to the body, it's as if you never sent it. If you can't tell the insect's body what needs to be done to live, the insect dies. Now, how we shut down the flow of information from one neuron to the next is what really breaks insecticides into different mode of action families. You may remember from last time that disrupting information flow happens in those little pieces of the nerves. It happens at the neuron level, at the cellular level. A real quick reminder, that nerve cell has branches, it has a trunk, and it has roots. We're working with those terms to keep things simple. Remember, the roots of one neuron are oriented toward the branches of the next neuron. There's a gap in between. We also need to mention another little but extremely important mechanism. It is the idea that there are keys and doors in neurons. The key from one neuron opens the door in the next neuron, which causes information to flow from one neuron to the next. Let me just quickly show you what that looks like. Once again, information from one neuron needs to go to the next, so a key is released which opens the door in the next, effectively moving the signal from one neuron down the chain to the next neuron. Now that gives you the general idea of how a signal moves from one neuron to the next. However, there's one more important step, and it's important in today's discussion. You have to close the doors and stop the signal or bad things happen. That means you have to get rid of the little key. The nervous system basically sends in an enzyme, and the enzyme, for lack of a better term, digests the key. When that happens, the doors close, things in the neuron go back to normal, and that neuron shuts down. We're just depicting that return to normal from chewing up the key to the doors to closing the doors to returning to normal in the slides that follow here. Now you see what happened. The neuron released an enzyme. The enzyme chewed up that key. The doors closed. The signal stopped firing and everything went the way it was before. So there are two groups of insecticides. Let's again use the term mode of action families that mess up this process of chewing up the key and closing the door. They bind to the stuff that chews up the keys. That's why I inserted the little picture of a ball and chain on a stick figure. The two families are the carbamates and the organophosphates. 
you can see a few of the common carbamate insecticides mentioned in this slide, 7 and furidan, for instance. Now, Fortress, Lorsban, Counter, and a portion of Aztec are members of the organophosphate family. Now, even though we're trying to keep things simple, we do need to use the correct terms. And the correct term for this mode of action would be acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. That's the right name for this family. Once again, these products bind to stuff the enzyme that chews up the keys. And the name of that bound up enzyme is cholinesterase. Now let's just quickly show you what happens when carbamate and organophosphate insecticides screw up this process. The key is released and crosses this gap between the two neurons, just as it should be. The key is inserted into the door or gate of the next neuron, just as it should be. And again, the door or gate on the next neuron opens like it should, which causes the cell to fire. In other words, the signal or nerve impulses move from one neuron to the next, again, just as it should be. So now the enzyme cholinesterase gets ready to come in and chew up the key, but something happens. And that something is that the insecticide, the cholinesterase inhibitor, gets in the way. That means that the doors stay open when they should be closed. An open door means that the neuron just keeps firing and firing and firing and firing. But it's not supposed to do that. It's kind of like trying to call home when all the phone lines are busy. Your important information can't get through. For the insect, the important information to move, to pump blood, etc. can't get through. When the lines are busy like this, everything begins to fall apart and the insect dies. It will lay on the ground and twitch because the nerves just keep firing and firing when they should not. That is how carbamates, things like 7, and organophosphates, things like counter, work. But again, let's just show you what that looks like. So let's just review here one more time what happened with carbamate and organophosphate insecticides. We said they really stop the flow of information down the nerve at that neuron level and the way that they do that is they stop this important key and door thing. You need the key from one neuron to be sent across that little gap to open the door in the next neuron. That's what sends the signal from one neuron to the next. And then you need that door to close. You need the neuron to stop firing. You don't want it to keep firing. That's like static on a radio trying to hear something across it. You just can't get the information through. So that fell apart when we used organophosphate and carbamate insecticides because they screw up the stuff that chews up the key. The nerve keeps firing. The nerve's busy when important information needs to come along. Well, thanks for watching this pretty intense lesson on insecticide mode of action. And as always, stay tuned for more insecticide mode of action and crop production information from Burris Agronomy U.